Good afternoon everybody, I am Gloria Martinez, biologist in Microptic and today I'm going to perform a new Microptic masterclass. This time, as you can check in the title, I am going to discuss the news on the WHO new manual combined to the news in our SCA new version, which is 6.6. .6. Um, just for a short introduction, um, as you know that since the 90s, the, the Department of Reproductive and Health and Research of the WHO has been publishing new guidelines on how the assessment of semen samples should be carried out in the laboratory. Um, meanwhile, as you know, the WHO guidelines are closely related to our CASA systems as they have always followed these, these guidelines. And in fact, we have two CASA systems that I imagine that you already know, which are the SCA Evolution, which is uh, the, our open system composed by a camera, a microscope and a computer with a software. And secondly, our SCG Scope, which is more closed, closed system and automatic system also. And this new version, SCA version 6.6, .6, is now ready to be installed. Um, beginning with the little bit of history of the WHO manuals, as you see, since the 90s, 80s, uh, that the first edition of the manual was launched, a set of different editions have been published and have been uh, launched by the, the organization. Uh, until we have arrived to the late, latest edition, which is the sixth one, that was launched last July in 2021. And through the years, different approaches have been added to sperm evaluation. Uh, for example, reference values have changed, have been updated. And in general, with each new manual, the purpose is always to guide the technician through the process of the semen analysis. So here you can just check for curiosity the date, the year of uh, launching for each version. From our side, Microptic was founded in 1989 and since then we have suffered from a big evolution while developing the for our first CASA system which was SCA Evolution and then SCA Scope in 2019. Each new version of the software of our devices counts on software improvements. For example, a new automatic models for the analysis, interface modifications always to try to make the software more user-friendly and other improvements. Besides, the sperm class analyzer systems have evolved to adapt always to the current WHO manual. Next, I am going to discuss very briefly the different news of WHO 6th edition manual and then we are going to go through each of them and to explain you how we have implemented these news in our systems. So starting with the basics, now in the 6th edition there is a more comprehensive study um, because it was said that in the fifth edition there could be an over or underestimation or representation of some geographical areas of the world. So probably it couldn't represent the general population. Thus, in this new edition combines the previous data with new data of studies collected during the last 10 years. And now um, other countries have, the, the data has been collected also from new countries, so now the, the idea, the purpose is to, um, uh, to represent as much as the world that it's possible. Um, in addition, a test has been suppressed, uh, for example, it's the cervical mucus test, because now it's considered to be obsolete. Uh, important, it has been a retrieval of the four categories classification for the motility analysis and also it's recommended to do at 37 degrees. We are going to discuss this subject later on. Uh, concerning vitality analysis, now it's recommended when motility, total motility is under 40%, not just the progressive motility, but the total one. In addition, there, are, there is no need of replicates for vitality and morphology tests. 
while before it was recommended to count two replicates and calculate the average, now just counting at least 200 sperms for each of them, now it would be uh, correct and representative of the sample. Very important um, and interesting, there has been a, a change in reference values. Um, we normally the fifth percentile is taken as the cut off for each analysis and now they have changed a little bit but uh, in fact the reference values they have been uh, replaced by decision limits so it has been stated that the use of the fifth centile values are not sufficient to diagnose the male infertility also we are going to discuss this item later on and in, the, in this new slide, you can check from the list of items that I have just introduced, the ones that are highlighted in blue are the ones that we have implemented in both our SEA Evolution and SEA Scope um, systems. Mm, moving to the, to the following news, to the next news, also the table that was showing the diagnostic classification has been removed. So, the terms of normosospermia, oligospermia are not longer used. Um, so this uh, is opening new decisions uh, from the clinician and the technologist to choose at least when to use these terms or whether they want to continue using them or not. In addition, the ejaculate odor is suggested to be assessed. Um, this can be a little bit a problem because it's a subjective analysis and in fact it goes against the rules of uh, personal protection against viruses but at least it can be an additional uh, thing to take into consideration during the macroscopic evaluation um, also a new structure uh, the, the manual is structured in a new way uh, um, grouping the analysis in three categories first of all the basic studies, then the extended examination, and finally the advanced examination. So the basic examination would be the set of robust routine procedures for determining semen variables that every lab performing semen assessment should follow. While the extended examination may be used in certain situations by choice of the lab or special request of the clinician and more specifically more emphasis has been given to the morphology index for example the teratospermy index and the other ones and also dna fragmentation evaluation has gained importance and genetic and genomic tests i repeat that these are the main news on the who guidelines but there can be other uh, variations that i imagine that you are also studying on how to adapt them to your center so i am focusing mainly on the ones that are related with the use of a CASA system. And finally, the advanced evaluation would uh, be not regarded as routine um, analysis, but they are more focused on research and they are um, proposing more analysis uh, according to the, to the, as the new technologies are advancing. And more specifically, more emphasis has been provided to the reactive oxygen species Test. Last but not least, the MAX technique has been described and then we are also going to, to go there. And once again, uh, you have in the screen the, the items that have been implemented in our CASA systems. So now I am going to describe each of them and show you how you can get access to, to them. So starting with motility test. Um, as you know, um, the, in, fifth, in the fifth edition, there were three categories concerning the sperm motility, which were uh, progressive, non-progressive, and immotile sperm. And now, the, the four categories classification, which was um, firstly proposed in the fourth edition of the manual, has been retrieved. So, um, this means that now, again, we have four categories, type A, sperms, B, C, or D. Um, you can check here the, the characteristics, the features of each of them. So um, it seems that the separation of type A and B has demonstrated to have clinical uh, relevance. And I'm going to show you how it looks like in our CASA system. 
So for example, this is a CA evolution and here we have a nice video of a, of a sample in a counting chamber. So if we analyze this field, we can check its analysis of the video and you see that here in the right part of the screen we can select if we desire to, to see, to follow the sixth edition classification containing the four types of sperms. This means that all the yellow ones will be the immotile, the blue ones are the type C um, and so on so. Or if we prefer to see the WHO fifth edition in which type A and B are altogether considered as progressive. Okay, so um, this is the, the difference. And then if you click, double click on one sperm, you can check here the category uh, to it uh, corresponds. Um, and this is the same with a CA scope. In addition, the motility analysis is recommended now at 37 degrees. It was also recommended in, in the fifth edition uh, to, do, to be assessed at this temperature, but now more importance has been given to this point, uh, provided that the room temperature is not that easy to control and it can be different the, between uh, different laboratories. So if they try to compare their results in one laboratory where it's, uh, I don't know, in, in the south, um, and then in another laboratory where uh, it's uh, so cold, results may not be comparable. So for this, uh, in our case, we count on uh, different heating stages that can be installed in the microscope. Uh, and uh, from this, from here, we can control the temperature uh, of the slides and of the analysis. And also in our SEA scope that counts on a heating stage, a warm stage motorized, it's possible to control the temperature to work. For motility, it's by default set at 37 degrees, but this can be modified. And I am going to show you how to get access to it. So here we are in our SA scope. And if we go to the settings, the analysis settings, you see that here in the motility settings, we have the option thermal stage. So we can switch on the stage, switch it off, or simply we can modify the temperature. And then once the system is restarted, it will be applied. Okay, so I'm going to come back to a PowerPoint. Perfect. Um, moving on to the next item. Now the vitality assessment is recommended uh, when motility, when total motility is uh, less than 40%. In the fifth edition, vitality was recommended when progressive motility was under this 40%, but now it's the total motility. And how we can apply this to a CASA system? In this case, for example, uh, if you are using the SCA scope, um, just to show you an example, if we search for a sample, in this case, we have that we have analyzed a motility and concentration sample and the results were that the, that the motility was under 40%. Uh, so now the vitality analysis is recommended. While with another sample, for example, in this case, motility is higher than 40% and in this case, vitality is not necessary. So this, this um, the settings in the in the scope can uh, provide the technician with the some clues, some guidelines on how to proceed with the semen analysis. Um, very important, there has been a change in the reference values. As you know, normally um, the fifth percentile is taken into account is um, taken as the cutoff for each analysis. And um, if you compare this table to the one in the fifth uh, edition manual, um, the results, either, um, the, the, yeah, the results, the cutoffs, are more or less the same. They have changed it a little bit. But um, here, well, here is to show you that this can be implemented in, in SEA and SEA scope. Now we are going to see how. But here the importance relies on the fact that uh, the reference values have been replaced by decision limits. Uh, because 
the, um, the distribution of the data of the population with the one-sided intervals um, show that um, these percentiles do not represent uh, distinct limits between fertile and infertile men. And it has been argued that this fifth percentile is not applicable to distinguish the normal ejaculates uh, from the abnormal. Because fertility, in fact, depends on a lot of factors, not just if one analysis is a little bit out of the ranges, uh, but other factors, for example, for instance, female factors. So in this case, uh, I will show you how we can do it with, I am going to close this, save and close. Yeah, so um, here from the menu administration, you can go to configuration tab and choose uh, the diagnostic section. And here you can see that now it's possible to, for example, continue using the WHO fifth edition reference values. They are set and you can continue using them. But also you can use uh, the updated reference values according to the new manual. These are the ones and cannot be changed. In the case that you want to change them, you need to, cho to choose a customized uh, reference values. And in this case, yeah, it's possible to change them. But the most interesting here is that you can choose if you want to use reference values or decision limits. So to understand this window, um, in this case, I have modified this, uh, in, to want to understand this, you need to know that the samples that in terms of the volume, for example, have a volume um, under 1.3 ml, this means that the sample will be abnormal uh, in terms of volume. And if the volume is higher than 1.5 ml, will be normal. But what happens with the values that are here in the, um, uh, between the, uh, the minimum and the maximum value? In this case, they will be considered as borderline. And it will be the, the technician or the, te the laboratory te uh, technolo technologist, um, the ones that will choose the final diagnostic of the sample, because they will be considered as borderline. And in fact, the idea that the WHO uh, guidelines uh, propose, suggest, is that each center customize their own minimum and maximum values. And this can be a little difficult and maybe there is some confusion, confusion here. Um, but as it's uh, suggested in, so, in some articles, one option could be to base on the literature that is available or to establish uh, the establishment of clinical decision threshold for selected uh, population, for selected categories of patients. Um, so uh, each center at the end need to, to know how to work, but it's possible to, um, to create these, these uh, reference uh, ranges, let's say, with, with the SEA evolution and also with SEA scope. From it, you can have access to it by going here again to the settings. And here in general, in the general section, you will find the diagnostic classification, which is indeed the, the same interface. Very close to, to this fact, we have the removal of the diagnostics classification table. So, in theory, these terms are no, long, no longer uh, used, but uh, we will see how each center will apply this to their, to their analysis. But now we have, uh, we, we tried to include more flexibility uh, in terms of the diagnostic. So this can also be customized from this window, here we had our reference values, but also we have this general section. And there are these four options that I'm going to explain right now. For example, the first one is if you, you can choose whether the, the diagnostic nomenclature will appear in the sample. As you know, here, once that you have your results, you, you obtain the diagnostic of the sample. So in this case, the, the, the diagnostic may or may not appear. And the same happens with uh, the, the inside the analysis, because 
in, on each analysis, if you open it, you will see that you have here the, the diagnostic, so you can choose to show it or not. And the same with the report. Okay. In the report, you can, you can also choose. And the, the fourth option is very interesting because in this case, um, it's, it's asking if you want to allow the technician to modify sample diagnostic. So in this case, if you click yes, you will see that you are able to modify here and maybe the, the software gives you by default an astenospermia, but uh, you consider taking into consideration the rest of the results you consider that still it's a normal spermy, so you can change it before it was fixed and it was impossible to change it. Oops. Um, what's more? Also, the ejaculate odor is suggested now to be assessed. Um, this can be maybe a problem, as I said before, because it's subjective and uh, we don't know in this COVID uh, era if this is uh, safe or not for the technician, but at least this is a, a parameter that it has been uh, proposed to be assessed. So in this case, what can be used is uh, the, the, this microscopic data section that you know that it includes uh, 14 optional fields and what you can do is if you double click you can change the title and then write here if uh, it's normal or abnormal and just to know that once that you change one of these optional fields uh, in one sample it will be applied to all of the samples that are created from now on so it's, the purpose is always to standardize the, the information that you add from the different samples. Um, other, other news, uh, more emphasis now has been provided to multiple sperm defects, in specifically the teratosospermy index, the multiple anomalies index and the deformity index. So they are also um, calculated during the automatic morphology analysis. You have here the definitions in order, in case that you want to know more about them. So um, when you perform an analysis of morphology, if now, for example, we launch a morphology analysis and we capture some images, I, I will capture just two of them, for example. Apart from the main results, you have here the, the calculation of these three indexes. So they can provide you with more information, not just of the main results, but also if the abnormal fraction of the sample, if the sperms are very abnormal or just a little bit. And in fact, to study the sperm abnormalities, the sperms that you have captured, you can use this tool, the sperm edit, which was launched with the 6.5 uh, version of our software but now in this new version 6.6 .6, it has been improved so you can click here and um, what we would recommend is first to select this new view okay and in this case uh, you you will have different sperms here and you can do a first check of the, the um, how the sperms look like and also you can use this interface for example to delete some of them at the same time if there are some artifacts or some uh, some analysis masks that don't correspond to the reality for example and once that you have done this then you go you can go to the list of the sperms and then for example select just to see the normal ones or the abnormal ones in order to go uh, faster and then check the classification for each of them it's not mandatory but it's up to the to the user and we recommend to check the, uh, the morphology results okay um, so this is a tool that you can use and finally more emphasis has been um, has been uh, given to uh, for example the dna fragmentation test that as you know dna fragmentation 
is a, is a test that it's an automatic module that it's compatible with SE Evolution and SE Scope and it's based on the spam chromatin dispersion technique, the HALO test. So this is a model that can be used, that can be added to your routinary analysis. Secondly, um, genetic tests now also they have more importance to identify diverse forms of sperm chromosom um, chromosomal abnormalities and gene mutations. So, uh, related to this genetic test, we have also another product which is not a CASA system, but it's called Metaclass. And in fact, if you check our website, you will have more information. You can also request some more information if you want, but this Metaclass product um, is used to do the karyotyping and fish. So, it's, uh, it can be used for these two tests. They are different models. Thirdly, um, more importance also has been given to the reactive oxygen species, the ROS, evaluation due to the fact that oxidative stress has been shown to be one of the major contributors of male infertility and an increase of this can affect the motility uh, first and then the DNA fragmentation of the sperm. So, uh, from Microoptic we, we have this kit which is called CANROS which is a colorimetric method to assess the level of reactive oxygen species on the sample. And last but not least, the MAX technique, which is the name for the magnetic activated cell sorting technique, which um, was designed for selecting a sperm with potentially undamaged DNA, so that can be very uh, closely related with the DNA fragmentation test. Um, there are still some studies missing, the WHO manual explains this, but um, this could be a good approach, at least for research purposes, and to um, suggest a possibility once we have a sample with uh, high levels of fragmentation. This could be a possible solution. And these analyses, are the, these three of them, are included in the advanced examination. So, uh, don't hesitate to ask uh, us about these uh, products that I have uh, introduced, the DNA module and the other kits, because they are uh, available at Microptic. If so, if you want to have more information, you, you can ask us. And, well, we have arrived to the final remarks. Um, so, we could say that compared to the older WHO 5th edition manual, the new manual, which was launched in July, 2021, provides a step-by-step -step guidelines to perform the semen analysis. Now with this or, um, organization of three different parts, basic uh, examination extended and advanced. Also recovers some items from older manuals. We have seen that uh, in terms of motility, now we come back to the type A, B, C and D sperms. Tries to standardize the basic analysis and proposes new research techniques. Um, in these manuals, we always find some techniques that have been uh, proved to help for during the semen assessment so that uh, centers can include them in their research and implement uh, to design a protocol and to try if these techniques can, can uh, provide some, some results that are not included in the, in the basic analysis provides new perspective at the moment of establishing sample diagnostic because, as we have seen uh, during this masterclass, the, um, the reference values have been removed and now everything is more uh, related and it's depending on the decision of the center, of the clinician and the laboratory technician who are running the analysis and they don't need just to, to check if one value is out of the reference values, but also um, take into consideration the whole sample and the, to, to make a final diagnostic and assess the quality of the sample. And finally, it focuses more on the global, global status of the sample, not just one result being out of the accepted range, as I have said. So here you have the bi bibliography. 
And finally, well, I wanted to thank you all to attend this webinar today. And now you have the opportunity to ask your questions. So um, don't hesitate to use this chat button, which is in the, in the chat. And then um, ask me, or if not, you can write directly, ask me by email. Thank you, everybody.